Starfield just launched and in a typical Bethesda fashion, it runs like a quadriplegic toss down a cliff. And let's say you want to run Starfield in your potato powered kerosene burning toaster. However, well, you know, the poor Chromebook most likely is gonna commit Sudoku rather than allowing it to run on it. So, I decided to take a brief look at the technical specs and details that you might be interested in. Well, I took a brief look at the launch performance of Starfield, and I got good news and bad news. Now yes, you can improve the performance by about 10 to even maybe 15%. However, remind me, what's your potato tolerance? So then, the good news. As I was struggling to stream my own Starfield adventures, I realized something was up with Starfield overall. Oh, come on, no. No, no. Are you, are you serious right now? So we found a repeatable crash, which is the worst kind of thing. Was it the Black Plague? No, 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 no. Just that once more Bethesda has released a poorly optimized game that once more needs modding community to fix it. So then, if you seek better performance for the game, just head on to the Nexus mods and pick up the little 3 kilobyte file and drop it in game's folders. Now when you start the game, the low graphics preset will load the file and it's potato vision. If that's all you needed, then go enjoy the game, but for those who like tech and technical stuff, well, I did some tests and I got some data to look over. First then, let's start with what even these INI files do. Well, simple, they are preset values for certain graphical settings. You can open these files with Notepad and configure them yourself. Seriously, it's easy and safe. For example, render scale setting. In game, it only goes as low as 50%, meaning that the game will basically render a 1080p image with 50% of the pixels. So fundamentally, you are just upscaling a 720 image. Now, of course, thanks to these INI files, you can go as low as, say, 35%. Or if you choose to screw around yourself, well, you can make something like this. Currently, this is the best we can do with Starfield in terms of performance. Well, that is until optimized models, game logic and other standard affair mods come along. And that or Bethesda gets off its ass. However, this also means that we still have a problem. Starfield runs like ass. Sure, there are plenty of people saying that, oh, I'm running 60 FPS with my RTX 9001 GPU. But you see, the problem is, you and everyone else should be getting better frame rates than this, no matter the hardware. If you're getting 60, you should be probably getting 90 or more. Still, for your enjoyment, I tested out these simple modifications and the results are in. Now, after thinking it over, I realized that Starfield does not offer anti-aliasing setting anywhere. Even in INI file, it's nowhere to be seen. I also noticed that my OBS, either when streaming or recording, started dropping frames by the tiniest difficulty in game geometry. And you know, I think I've seen this behavior somewhere before. You see, by the last couple of weeks, I tried playing old Bethesda games. I started with Morrowind, for example. You were dreaming. What's your name? Okay, right, so resolution's correct, anti-aliasing is the, is the one to be blamed for this. And figuring that that's an old game, I can crank up the anti-aliasing just for fun. As it happens, during stream, the damn thing dropped more frames than Bethesda did during Fallout 76 release. And you see, it doesn't matter what game it is on, anti-aliasing in of itself is highly demanding on GPU. And thus, my OBS was starved out of resources. Now, what I think is happening is Bethesda, for whatever reason, among other settings, have chosen to maintain overly high anti-aliasing, even on the lowest settings, causing the performance to drop harder than their own credibility. Now, if we take a look at the recommended spec hardware on Steam, you see RTX 2080 Ti to be for the recommended spec machine. Well, guess what? I have a Ti version, which is slightly better. And normally, when it comes to recommended spec machines, you can expect a 1080p medium setting gameplay with 60 FPS on average. However, as you can see, my repeatable test shows that my machine didn't even manage that much on lowest settings. Even accounting for my Threadripper CPU, which is, you know, not the best one for gaming and all that, it's 
still below what you'd expect it to be. So, here we got a problem. Sure, with these INI files, we can turn the game into a 60 FPS smeary mess, but go play that, right? However, that still does not fix the underlying issues with Starfield's launch performance. Until Bethesda gets off its ass and introduces proper optimization and settings, like for example FOV slider as well, or frame limiters, our real hope lies with mothers, and that will take time. So there you go, hopefully this enlightened you and maybe even taught you something. Go play around with those inning files, they're just fun and you can't really break anything, so have at it. Why not? Boy do I love single player games. However, uh, stay tuned because um, I figured I could do something really stupid. So come with me to see the results. Also check out the Patreon and all the usual things. Um, before this explodes. Oh gods. Ah, uh, it's getting hot already. <laughs>